What is going on everyone? This is Chris Walton, your instructor for AV203, part 135, 121 operations. So I know last week we waived the, or I waived the discussion, the weekly discussion. So we're back into it. We are in November and this is week 12. We have about four more weeks of the course and then we'll be wrapping up. So I know that went by pretty fast, but here it is. Um, this week we're, we're in, are in part 135 operators. So we covered part 121 and we talked about part 135 briefly. We talked about air charter and air taxi, what those are. We talked about, I think the last time, not last week, but two weeks ago, we talked about fractional ownership and how that works. Um, this week, we are looking at the application process for a part 135 operation. So say you wanted to start a air charter service, air taxi service, um, something along that lines and you want to do it part 135 because it's non-scheduled, how would you go about doing that? What does that application process look like? Um, what does it take? That's what I'll be talking about briefly today. So um, it's a five-step process, five-step op application process that consists of the pre-application, the formal application, document compliance phase, the inspection or demonstration inspection portion, and then your certification. So five steps. Pre-application phase is pretty, that's the first step. It's pretty uh, pretty simple. It's just pretty much stating your uh, intent. So it's kind of a statement of intent you submit to the FAA saying, hey, this is what I want to do. This is my intentions. It kind of initiates things. That's what, that's literally what it is. Um, the formal application part, that's the, that's the heavy hitter. So that's what's gonna take up the most time, the most time consuming. In it, you do your statement of compliance, and pretty much what that is, is you go through each FAR, each federal regulation, that, that applies to your operation, and you have to list or state how you're going to comply, or yeah, pretty much how you're gonna comply with it, how you're going to um, be in compliance with that regulation. Um, I guess, example, I'm, I'm not gonna use a specific FAR, Goes my oh sorry guys my makeshift tripod give me a second the tripod's downstairs so I, I literally taped this up and hope that it stuck and it did not but it's not my uh, my phone so it's not too bad so yeah give me a minute. what are we talking about we're talking about compliance all right Fingers crossed this one stays. I don't want to put too much statements. So yeah. All right. So that's that's two. Step one, pre-application. Step two, statement, formal application, which is your statement of compliance, how what FARs apply to you and how you're going to um, be in compliance with them. Three is your document compliance phase. So in this, you pretty much there's different uh there's a slew of different different documents from general ma general maintenance program, de-icing program anti-drug and alcohol for pilots, hazmat procedures, record improvements, all that. And you pretty much have to go through and, and list in the document compliance phase, how you, that you have a program set up in place for that specific program. So for example, um, hazmat, hazmat procedures. This is the program we have to take care of hazmat materials. This is what's in place. Um, De-icing program and training. This is what we have as a operator and this is what's in place. You have to provide all your documents that meet that specific program's criteria. Um, same thing for uh, management personnel. This is our management structure. This is the program we have. This is what's in place. Um, sorry, I'm trying to think of examples. Anti-drug, this is, this is the program. This is how we handle this. If our pilots have drug incidents, that sort of thing. This is what's in place. That's what the F FAA, they want to know that you have a program in place for each of those things. After the document compliance phase, you have your demonstration and inspection phase. And this will do, it'll, there's pretty much three, uh, three things here. Your pilot training and checking in which you're going a, uh, sorry, I have my notes. Yeah, your pilot, pretty much they're gonna check the pilot and they're gonna check the aircraft. So in your pilot, they're gonna check, um, they wanna make sure that your pilots, you're qualified, that you, you, you're gonna undergo a series of check rides for that aircraft. And then they wanna check the aircraft inspections and make sure the aircraft is certified and then they might do a test run where a um an operator will ride in the aircraft or fly the aircraft for a number of hours to see how it operates 
that's in the demonstration and inspection phase. Pretty much checking the aircraft, checking the, the pilots that you have hired for your Part 135 operation. After that, there's the certification process, the last, the fifth phase, last phase of the procedure, in which um, this is when you get your certification. There's an OPSPECS, and that's pretty much what the uh, air carrier authorization is. It lists your, as your authorizations and your limitations as an air carrier. So what you are authorized to do, as well as what your limitations are as far as operating as a part 135 operator. So those are the five, five phases. Pre-application phase, what's your intent? Formal application phase, your statement of compliance and how you're going to comply with the regulations that apply to you. Document compliance phase, make sure you're in compliance with each of their programs. Demonstration and inspection phase, pretty much making sure the pilot is good to go and that the aircraft is good to go. And then the fifth, sorry, I counted wrong. The fifth one is your certification phase where you get your certifications from the FAA saying what your limitations are and what you are authorized to do as a part 135 operator. So that wraps it up. If you have any questions, please let me know. Till next time, this is Chris Walton, your instructor, AB203. Take care.